So welcome everyone. And today I want to talk a little bit more about the happiness ladder. This is a tool that I love to use. I love to use for myself. I love to use with my clients and I love using it in our happiness habits challenges. So the happiness ladder. I want to talk a little bit today about what it is, where it comes from, how it can hinder us and how it can help our happiness. So first of all, let's just start with what it is and so that you can start using it right now. So I'll ask you a question. How happy are you now? And what I want you to do is think about a ladder, the any kind of ladder, even like that rusty old one that you see in all my photographs. <laughs> Oh, it can be a lovely staircase to heaven. But the idea is that at the bottom of the ladder, you have naught out of 10. And at the top of the ladder, you have 10 out of 10. So naught out of 10 happiness, 10 out of 10 happiness. And so when I ask the question, how happy are you now? You're going to come up with a number out of 10. Could be 2 out of 10. Could be naught out of 10. Could be 9 out of 10 wherever, could be five out of 10. And that's the happiness ladder. It's really as simple as that. <laughs> but don't let the simpleness deceive you. I think that's the biggest mistake that we make is how powerful the self-assessment tool actually is. And, you know, I just want to tell you that you're in really good company. This is not some little small arbitrary thing that I have thought up myself. This is a tool that's based on a self-assessment tool developed in the 1960s by a guy called Hadley Cantrell. And Cantrell's ladder is used by Gallup nowadays to measure happiness worldwide for the World Happiness Report. And this is exactly the question that they ask. You know, if you picture yourself on a ladder, where are you? How satisfied are you with your life? So I've adapted it a little bit for our journey and whole being happiness in midlife, but the idea is the same. So it's a very powerful tool, very powerful. <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit about the special things that happen when you use the happiness ladder. First of all, let's talk about how it can actually hinder our happiness. So if you were to use the happiness ladder, you know, every now and again, like you just think, oh, you know, how happy am I? I'm going to tell you that a lot of the time you're going to get an answer you don't really like. And you're going to be thinking, geez, Julia, I'm not that happy. And why are you asking me to think about this? Because I'm getting unhappier. And this is an interesting thing, and it, it, I love this quote by um, John, Stuart, John Stuart Mill, who, is, uh, who was a philosopher in the 1800s. And it's, his quote goes, ask yourself how happy you are and you cease to be so. <laughs> so this is exactly what can go wrong when we misuse the happiness ladder and when we use it as a tool against ourselves. First of all, what happens when we ask ourselves, how happy are we? Our brain goes to look for the gaps in our happiness first. Because remember, as I speak so much on the podcast about, we are wired bodies and brains for survival. So we are constantly scanning on any given day for things that might be threatening to our survival. It's not such an issue nowadays, especially in the West, we're not really surviving, but it's our brain is still working the same. So when you say, how happy am I, how content, or how safe, how well am I? You know, the first response that you get like this is the brain's finding problems. So if we use the happiness ladder like that, every now and again, not very robustly, just a, a fleeting thought, that's what's gonna happen. You're gonna keep getting this thing. There's something missing. There's something wrong in my life. So it doesn't help us. But when we use it regularly, and when we use it on purpose and intentionally for our whole being happiness as a powerful, powerful coaching tool, then it can really help us. Because the first thing that it gives us 
all right, which is wonderful at the start of our journey, is a snapshot of how happy we are. Just an overall sense. I'm at six. I'm at two. So it's a snapshot of the reality of your life in that moment. The next thing you can do is if you start to use it regularly, say on a monthly basis, like you track it if the first day of every month or a weekly basis, every Monday or every Friday, you start to see trends and rather interesting things about your happiness. I think of when I was at boarding school, you could have asked me on a Sunday night, I would have been at zero out of 10 because the Monday boarding school blues are starting and on Friday, 10 out of 10. And many of us are still like that. And actually on social media, you might see me because I post Monday and Friday, where are you on the happiness ladder? TGIM, thank goodness it's Monday and Friday for Friday so that we can start tracking what's going on with our happiness at the beginning and end of every week. And from those trends, we can start to develop an insight into what is actually going on in our happiness. What are the kind of fundamental beliefs that are, that are in our brains about our own happiness and about our lives and about our whole being? And then if you use it even more regularly, like on a daily basis, or like me, I use it every time I sit down to eat. It's an interesting one. I'll talk about that just now, especially for all you overeaters out there. But if you start using it daily, it becomes a fantastic tool to start navigating and pivoting your happiness in the moment. Because what you find is throughout your day, your happiness is fluctuating up and down, up and down, up and down. And how comfortable are you with that fluctuation? But what also happens is in that choice moment, as you ask yourself that question, how happy am I? You have a choice to stay there and you have a choice to pivot and step up the happiness ladder. Now, the choice to stay there. Let's say that you, your answer is two out of 10. So you ask yourself in the morning, I'm two out of 10. And it's a really good thing to do. And it's a very kind thing to do to ask yourself, like why exactly is it two out of 10? Instead of just jumping and saying, oh, I'm going up the happiness ladder to number eight. I must just change my thoughts and move on. It's not about that. That's not what whole being happiness is about. We're about embracing our entire beings, our embrace, embracing our entire emotional life, the 50-50 version of life. So our negative emotions and our positive emotions. So when you, def when you find yourself at two out of 10 is honor that, find out why you're at two out of 10. It's not a big deep thing, it's just a quick question. And then if you decide to stay there, honor that. So a great example is, you know, today is my late father's, what would have been his 90th birthday. And so today, for a lot of today, I've been at about two out of 10, three out of 10. I took a walk with my husband along the seafront. We had a lovely cup of coffee. It was a beautiful morning, honoring my father, thinking about him, being in the space of how much I miss him, how much the six years he's missed of my life. And a few tears, but I'm also immensely joyful because I'm also eight out of 10. I'm here with you doing the work that I love. I'm looking at a picture of him as I'm talking to you and my heart is filled with love and gratitude. So I'm eight out of 10. Same day, same thing. So this is so interesting about happiness and knowing where you are on the happiness ladder. And then the other way, oh, so, so that was the, the kind of choose to stay in the negative, all right. The other thing is 
our brains on default, like I said, look for what's missing. So the other question is, if I find I'm at two or three out of 10, and it isn't something profound, like, you know, grief and honoring, or being ill and sick, or being truly worried about someone in your, in your life who's, who's unwell, and it's just your brain finding fault, then you can pivot in the moment. And I love the question, of, I love to ask myself, so how happy am I right now, Julia? Am I really? And that question alone opens, opens everything. It's really easy to step up the happiness ladder with that question, am I really? Because what comes in are things like gratitude and the joy of the dog sleeping and the beautiful sky outside or the thought of a cup of coffee or you've got the day off and you start to realize hmm, maybe it's not actually two out of 10, maybe it's five. And what could I do for myself right now if I wanted to be at six or seven? You know, could I make myself a lovely cup of coffee and take a breather before I get into the traffic? Could I promise myself I'm going to gym this afternoon and pack my gym bag, do something beautiful for my body? So that's that opportunity of pivoting in the moment. And the last thing I want to share with you is this momentary awareness and why I choose to use it when I sit down for a meal. So I have managed to lose quite a bit of weight recently that crept on through my perimenopause and menopause. And the way that I did it was becoming very mindful of where I was in the moment before I started eating. So where I was emotionally, on the happiness ladder specifically, but it also allowed me to tap into what was going on inside my body. Was I tired? Was it buzzing? How hungry was I really? What did my body want? What does it want to eat? And so that kind of has, gives me that power of that intuitive way of eating. And you could use that with work. If work is something that you're not feeling that happy about, you could start questioning yourself at the time, every time you sit down to do a piece of work to discover what's going on in your brain about the work that you're doing. Which parts of your work do you really quite enjoy? Which ones don't you? I mean, it's really fascinating when we look at work because most people go work, oh, I don't really like my job. And then when you start saying, well, what would you like to take out your job? Let's do this exercise. And people start to say, oh, I really love the research piece. I love the public speaking piece, you know, but like, let's throw away the emails. <laughs> and how can we pivot in the moment with our emails? Yeah, oh, that's fascinating. How could our email inbox or thousand mails of them take us up the happiness ladder? That's a thought, isn't it? So this is this beautiful tool. It's so simple to ask yourself regularly, how happy am I? Where am I on the ladder? Am I at naught? Am I at three? Am I at eight? And what does that mean? Why am I there? What are the ingredients? of happiness for me that I am discovering when I use this tool? What are all the ingredients of my whole being happiness in midlife? All the pieces of the puzzle that come together to craft this version of my happiness, your happiness. So the happiness ladder is a powerful tool for you to be able to do that. So jump on the happiness ladder. Come with me. I'd love to see you. You can find me on social media. We do Up the Happiness Ladder regularly. Or if you want, yeah, you can join my email list where I check in with people on a weekly basis. And the new thing that I'm starting, which you might really love, is a private WhatsApp group 
where we will check in on ourselves every day. So I will send a reminder to all of you every day, where are you on the happiness ladder? And let's see what happens to your definition of happiness. Let's see what happens to your experience of happiness. Let's see, midlife, whole being, happiness. We're unpuzzling it. We're creating a beautiful artwork of your life. We're going from puzzled, confused, resistant, procrastinating, unhappy in our relationships, all the way through to resilient, to creative, to thriving in our midlives, in the next phase of our lives. So I can't wait for you to join me. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.